Hi, this is Goff of GoffLoy.com and today we're looking at the Xiaoyi Sports Action Camera kindly provided by the guys at Xiaomi Singapore. This following video is a compilation of several clips which I filmed using this sports action camera which should illustrate how it performs and the various different scenarios. The introduction was filmed using the sports action camera's inbuilt microphone which doesn't really pick up audio very loudly so it was amplified in post-production. This uh, voice dubbing is done with a different microphone. The first test was me taking the Xiaoyi sports action camera onto a train and recording out of the train window. This was to test for rolling shutter artifacts which cause straight um, objects to become tilted when uh, filming in moving environments and causes a sort of jello effect. Overall it's not a severe problem with the Xiaoyi camera although at higher speeds when this train is passing by you can see the doors start tilting but this is not quite as sickening as some other cameras. This is not specific to the Xiaoyi, every rolling sh uh, shutter based camera has this problem and this is quite common amongst things like phone cameras as well as point and shoots in some DSLRs. Here we're looking at the 240 frames per second high speed um, shot in 480p and we're playing this back at 60 frames a second and you can see here that the resolution is rather limited and it's rather blocky but the motion is nice and fluid. And this is another clip of uh, 480p at 240 frames per second and that's me washing the camera under the sink with a waterproof case on. The waterproof case actually performs quite well and uh, you can sort of see the water sloshing about but here we can see that under very very low light situations uh, the video does have quite a bit of noise which uh, the compression starts turning into blocky uh, messes and it's not particularly great. Another test I did was to place the camera outside on a slightly overcast day um, inside the waterproof case and take a time lapse with it facing the sun. This allowed me to test whether the camera is able to tolerate high temperatures of which it passed without a problem. So it was able to survive over an hour and a half sitting in the sun without terminating its recording early. Then I decided, because of the wild weather we uh, received over the December period, to take it outside on a stormy day, uh, again in the waterproof case, to see how good uh, the slow-mo features worked. So this first clip is done at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and kind of shows you that the lightning is very transient, it's very quick, and it's very difficult to capture. But even in this low light situation, the 1080p is not doing too badly considering it is a dark sky and uh, we can resolve the lightning as well as a plane flying by in the background. Now we move on to the 720p 120 frames per second shot, but we're playing it back at 15 frames a second, which is not quite smooth but it's much better because it gives you a little bit of time to see the details that are happening. So you can actually see the bolts of lightning uh, start to form and slowly trace out along the sky. And this is not something you will see uh, on any other camera without such high frame rates. The 720p does preserve a good amount of the detail um, while giving you this flexibility to do slow-mo uh, replays of what you're seeing. Unfortunately, in a lot of these slow-mo modes, audio is not captured, so you will not get any sound with it. So here we've moved on to 240 frames per second, 480p, and we can see that a lot of detail has been lost and the compression starts getting in the way. On another day, I decided to take it to the rooftop of UNSW Civil Engineering Building, where I had access, and uh, this was a moderately windy day, but it was for the most part sunny, and I placed it on my rotating time-lapse uh, platform and filmed a time-lapse there. And we can see that the camera handles uh, the heat and the wind no problems at all, and this is outside of its waterproof case. It also handles the sunlight moderately well, with uh, fairly good flare control on the lens, but uh, the 
the automatic exposure does go a little bit odd and causes that flickering sky because it doesn't have a long time constant. So what happens is it adjusts the exposure rather abruptly and this causes the flickering to occur. The next trip was uh, down to Guatemala, uh, which is in the Royal National Park, where I put the camera on a tripod and just let it film uh, the, the shore. And we can see the video is relatively good, um, but it's not as crisp as it could be. Um, generally, the saturation was good in that shot, but now that we come to Austin Beach, where we've got a lot of sun going into the lens, it seems like uh, the contrast and the saturation is a little bit lower. Uh, even with the rather complex waves, it seems like uh, it's handling it very well. And of course, what is it like to uh, test a waterproof camera? Well, it's rather interesting. I thought I'd let the camera wash in the, uh, in the water, and uh, funnily enough, this is how I almost lost the camera <laughs> underwater. Um, needless to say, we eventually grabbed the rope and we managed to make sure that it didn't get lost ever again. But just to be sure that it was durable enough, along with the waterproof case, uh, we decided to let it get toppled over quite a few times. It's quite interesting footage. And it's also nice to hear the sound uh, being conducted through the waterproof case, maybe also through the tripod legs. Uh, that way it kind of gives a little bit more realism to the experience. So I'm not sure there's that many clips of this happening, but it certainly can tolerate the water. And here's another clip uh, of the of of the rocks, and you can see uh, with the harsh sun, the dynamic range of the sensor is a little bit short, with a bit of overexposure in the white area of the water, and uh, well, details getting lost in the dark areas. The automatic exposure can be seen to very abruptly change the exposure, so the sky seems to flicker a little bit as well. Um, but this is in 60p, and we can see, for the most part, it seems to handle this rather well. Now this is the 240 frames a second 480p mode and we can see that uh, there is a strange sort of compression artifact going on where every few seconds it seems to judder a little bit and this is not because of how I'm processing the video but it's more likely a result of the way the compression, the hardware compression on the actual Xiaoyi camera works as well as the motion compensation and noise reduction system on the, uh, on the processor works. So this is something to be aware of, especially even in dark clips where uh, I'm shooting the lightning outside, the noise level seems to sort of jump up and down every few seconds. So it'll get more and more and more noisy and then it suddenly drops down in noise and this cycle seems to repeat. So this is another use of the camera. I decided to attach it to a tripod leg and go for some uh, exploration underwater. Um, this is one of the rock pools at Austin Beach and uh, we can see some of the uh, sea weed growth underwater um, and some of the uh, rocky uh, silty sand base um, as well. One thing to be aware of is that the Wi-Fi signals don't propagate through water very well so if you do lose your camera underwater you won't be able to pick up the Wi-Fi signal and uh, if you are filming underwater with a camera submerged uh, there will be no chance of you actually uh, getting a live preview over Wi-Fi. So this is another shot that we took at Guatemala which involved putting the camera near a bee's nest in the rocks. And this is the 60p edition and you can see the uh, bees are whizzing around crazily um, and uh, they're sort of just going randomly. Um, but now if we look at the 720p 120 frames a second being played back at 15 frames we can see the bees uh, wings flap and we can see how it sort of alters direction almost uh, almost like a collision avoidance system 
Um, so a lot of these sorts of things you can really only reveal in high speed and it's one of the specialties of the Xiaoyi camera. And for the final test I put the Xiaoyi camera into the freezer which confirms that the camera works at cold temperatures.